Welcome to Airbus. Hello, I'm Jeremy Close, and today I'm talking to Ian Walters, who's leading the European Space Agency mission to the Sun called Solar Orbiter. Hi, Ian. I'd like to start by asking, why do we want to send a spacecraft to the Sun? Yeah, it's a good point. There's very little we know about the Sun, even though we've been looking at it through telescopes for 400 years from Earth. And part of the problem is it's actually a long way away, about 150 million kilometres. And um, what we see on Earth is, um, well, it happened on the Sun eight minutes ago if it's travelling by light. But the solar wind, which we also want to study, is much slower and it's taking nearly a week to get to Earth. And if we want to really understand things like how the solar wind is created from things that we see on the sun's surface, then we have to get a lot, lot closer. And that's really the reason for Solar Orbiter, to get really close. But closer, I guess, is, is going to be quite challenging. It's, it's presumably going to get very hot. Yes, I think you can imagine uh, controlling the temperature is one of the biggest design challenges that we have. The way we do that is with, uh, with a heat shield. So we design a part of the spacecraft which protects us from that intense heat and we literally hide behind it for most of the mission, which means the spacecraft itself can be much more normal in terms of the technologies that it uses. But how do you regulate the temperature when there's no air circulating? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a vacuum in space. You don't get warmed if you're in the shadow, like you do here on Earth. So whenever you're in the shadow, it's extremely cold. And some people find that a bit difficult to understand that you can get so close to the sun and yet still be quite cold if you're not facing the sun directly. So we have to manage those big temperature extremes, the, the, the parts of the spacecraft that do face the sun, which are the heat shield and the solar arrays, of course, to generate power, and the, uh, the big antenna that we use to communicate back to Earth, um, they will get very hot, but the rest of the spacecraft could uh, get very cold. And we have an instrument boom, which is about four meters long, sticking out the back of the spacecraft. That's always in shadow. And that can get down to really cold temperatures, you know, about minus 180 degrees centigrade. So testing a spacecraft like this is going to be pretty tricky then? Yeah, it's quite a complex test program. Everything that's put on the spacecraft is first tested at its uh, what we call the unit level. Of course, the first thing that it's got to survive is the launch. Uh, and the launch is a, a very violent part of the, the mission. It's the riskiest part of the mission. Um, we need to be sure the spacecraft can survive it. So we do a test of the entire spacecraft on a mechanical shaker and in an acoustic chamber. So we literally shake it and shout at it at the levels that we would expect to see during the launch. And then, as you mentioned, um, we need to uh, show that it can survive the temperature extremes. And we do that by putting the complete spacecraft inside a, a really large vacuum chamber. And then we uh, heat it up and we cool it down. And we show that at the uh, hot extremes and the cold extremes, the spacecraft is still performing exactly as we want it to do. So when it's ready for launch then, presumably you just head towards the sun? Uh -huh. Not quite so simple, I'm afraid. Um, the way we get to the sun is um, via Venus. So we need Venus to give us a little gravitational kick. It's very difficult to actually get into an orbit around the sun without using Venus to get there. But shouldn't the sun's gravity just pull you in? No, it's, it's quite the opposite, in fact. It's, it's, it's a little bit counterintuitive how gravitational fields work, but it's actually very difficult to get closer to the sun. I mean, you need a huge amount of energy, or, or strictly to lose a huge amount of energy before you can even get any closer. Um, so it's, it's actually quite difficult to get that close to the sun. And what are you hoping that Solar Orbiter will discover? One of the things that we really want to do is to understand how the magnetic field of the sun forms, how it's created. We don't really understand that at all. We have some ideas, but we can't prove which of those ideas is correct because we just don't have enough data, enough information to prove those theories. And we need to really get a look at the north and south poles of the sun to really understand the magnetic field. That's where the magnetic field of the sun comes out. And if we could only get a good look at the, the sun there and see what the activity is there and measure what we see there, uh, we can much more tightly constrain some of the ideas and theories that we've got about how, how the magnetic field is, is formed. 
Um, but we can't see these poles from Earth. The only way to see them is to get out of the orbital plane of where the Earth is rotating around the Sun, what we call the ecliptic plane. We need to get out of this plane. And we use Venus for that. Um, towards the end of the mission, in years 8, 9 and 10, we're really starting to look down at a nice deep angle then on the, on the poles of the Sun and we hope then to get some really good pictures and some really good measurements. And that's going to tell us really a lot more about how the magnetic field is formed. Uh, one final question for you. Have you any advice for someone who's uh, thinking about a career in space or indeed what qualities they, they might need for, for working on a complex mission like this? So studying maths or physics or engineering or even business studies, they're all good topics, I would say, to get into the business of building spacecraft. But I think more importantly, when we're doing something like a, a science mission, a science spacecraft, it's the innovation and the aspect of creativity that we bring to our jobs every day that's just as important as the subject that we study. So, for instance, we had to find the right materials to build a heat shield out of. And at first we studied all sorts of different ideas for whether they should be reflective or white or black. Or, and it was really quite some time before we found the optimal solution, which is actually to make them completely black. And that does actually, in the end, give us the best performance in space. Um, but it's this aspect of bringing creativity to your job every day is what I think makes the job really exciting and worthwhile. So if you have these uh, traits, I would say, then please think about joining us. Thanks very much for talking to us, Ian. Thank you very much. 